Yep. Right, what are we on? Is it part six of the Triumph Bonneville Bobber Black build? In conjunction with Merton Customs. And today we're going to be having a look at how to fit Merton's scoop shorty front mudguard. Now, first things first, yes, I know that the shirt that I'm wearing is far too big for me. I've lost a bit of weight lately. But I don't see the point in buying uh, new clothes until I've got down to where I need to be. <laughs> Actually, I didn't realise it looked as bad as it did. Anyway, moving on. The Bobber motorcycle is a very specific genre of motorcycle, which I think gained popularity in the early 1950s in the United States. Quite probably the first custom motorcycles as we know them now. Bog standard motorcycles adopted by ex-servicemen and stripped down for drag racing. The hot rods of the motorcycle world. Now when it comes to building factory bobbers, obviously the manufacturer's hands are tied to some extent by legislation. So some of the features that would, back in the day, have been considered essential tend to get lost in the translation for modern production. So Motown Customs' philosophy with a lot of the um, custom parts that they've created for this motorcycle was to give the owner the option to sort of return the bike to a, a more genuine bobber look. And I'm saying that because it's obvious from the comments in this series so far that a lot of people quite simply don't get it. Customization can be about improving the motorcycle, you know, making it more practical in some way, but not always. It's sometimes about just achieving the right look. Now, one thing I was a little bit concerned about um, a few weeks ago when I was first researching this video, because actually this has been filmed on two separate days, weeks apart, for reasons that I won't go into. Well, I will, but in a minute. A lot of custom parts manufacturers are making this component either from aluminium or, which is even worse, plastic. The issue with those components are that the specification of this motorcycle does require that the fork legs are braced at the point of the front mudguard attachment, which is why Triumph make their front mudguard from steel. This Merton scoop is also made from steel and it does have the required bracing in place to ensure that your handling and safety isn't going to be affected when this part is fitted to your bike. As you can see, Merton Customs have also taken the trouble to colour match the paint and exemplary finish that we have come to expect from Triumph motorcycles. Now, I actually started filming this video some two months ago and I intended to incorporate it in with the video for the chain guard. But when I actually got my teeth into it, I realised that Triumph had actually hidden the fasteners away for the front mud guard, which required that the front wheel has to be removed in order to get at them. And I couldn't find my 17mm Allen key. Plus, there wasn't enough time left in the day because it was a slightly bigger job than I expected. So... You are going to need, at the very least, a decent scissor jack. Now, you can pick these up for £35-40 pounds on Amazon or eBay. I used my hydraulic jack because that's what I have. And you're also going to need to support the rear of the bike because the front wheel is quite heavy, so when you remove it, the bike is likely to tip backwards. Now, I would recommend a paddock stand. And if you own a bobber, you should have one of those. Or you may be able to secure the bike by um, sort of getting some planks or something under the back wheel to stop the bike from tipping backwards when you remove the front wheel. I'll leave that up to you. It's a good idea before lifting the bike up to just loosen off the pinch bolts for the front axle and loosen off the front axle. The pinch bolts are not too bad, but the axle is set to quite a high torque setting, so you know the amount of force you need to put on it to loosen it off initially, it's just better if you do that while the bike's on the ground rather than you know while it's waving up in the air on a jack. So as I say, it's best to loosen those off before you jack the bike up. Now, the other thing to take into consideration are the brake calipers, uh, especially if you're on your own, because 
it can be a bit difficult getting everything lined up when it comes to refitting the wheels. So I would recommend that you do disconnect both front brake calipers before attempting to remove the front wheel. Now, I know it does look a bit like I'm fumbling around a little bit with some of these ticks. What you have to remember is I have to give the camera the best angle of view so that you can see what's going on. Which often means I can't properly see what I'm doing with the tools, just bear that in mind. Now, the keepers or stays that hold the um, brake hoses in place will also need to be removed because these are actually fastened onto the mudguard itself. And once you've got those off, you can go ahead and remove the front wheel. Right, so providing you've slackened your pinch bolts off enough, you should then easily be able to unscrew the front axle by means of a 17mm Allen key. Be aware, this wheel is pretty heavy, so you know just be prepared for that as you withdraw the axle. And it is best just to take the weight of the wheel with one hand while you withdraw it. And you can then remove the wheel and just prop it up somewhere out of the way where it's safe. You can then finally get at the four fasteners underneath the uh, actual mudguard itself in order to get the mudguard off. Now, I'm not going to bore you with this whole removal procedure, it's just four bolts. Now, whilst I couldn't see any evidence of Loctite, these bolts were extremely tight all the way out. I suspect they'd partially seized in place. It's a TX fastener not an allen screw just bear that in mind a small ratcheting kit with the appropriate uh, sized tx key would obviously be the order of the day here but i don't have one so i had to persevere by hand and once you've removed all four fasteners you can carefully remove your oem mudguard now if you just pay attention to the fastening points where they've been machined on the inside of these fork legs they are extremely sharp the way they've been machined so be very careful when maneuvering your new mudguard into place and sort of you know threading your screws in in fact it might be a good idea just to protect them with some black electrical tape or something like that while you maneuver it into place once again to some extent i was doing this blind to give the camera the best angle while i was trying to get it into place and as a result i did actually scratch one of the lugs on the new mudguard the mudguard has to be a snug tight fit because it is structural obviously i would presume you're not going to have the hassle of um you know camera angles getting in your way but just be aware of that and be very careful while maneuvering it into place so replace your bolts or screws fasten them in place securely and then you're ready to put your front wheel back on It's always quite difficult replacing the bobber wheels because they are so heavy and you have to be careful of those spaces that are fitted into the hub because they do have a habit of popping out while you're moving it around. Get some help with this if you can but if you're doing it on your own you know just take your time and be patient it is doable. And then go ahead and fasten all your fasteners up. I'll leave the torque specifications in the video description down below. Right, so once your wheel's securely fastened back in place, it's time to replace the calipers. 
Again, I'll leave the torque values uh, in the video description down below. I mean, it, it is actually much easier to do this uh, this way around by removing your calipers before attempting this installation because it, it's the devil's own job getting that front wheel back in place as it is. And if you're having to maneuver it around two disc calipers as well, I can imagine it'll be nigh on impossible, especially if you're on your own. Finally, before lowering your bike to the ground, although it doesn't really matter, you can do it once the bike's been lowered, don't forget to replace those keepers for your brake hoses. And the job, as they say, is a good one. As always, I will leave a link for this scoop front mudguard in the video description down below, along with a 12% discount code, which is exclusive to viewers of this channel. And that will entitle you to a 12% discount for any Motone product from their official UK website. Now, I know from previous experience on this channel that this um, cutback front mudguard isn't going to be to everyone's taste. The object of this series really is just to show you what is possible with Motone parts. It doesn't mean that you have to use all of them. It's just a series devised to show you the various options that are available. Triumph's Bonneville's range is actually designed to be a customization platform. You know, that's obvious by the amount of parts they themselves supply. There's nothing wrong with leaving your bike stock, as I know some people like to do, but the whole draw of the Bonneville range is that they are a customization platform. And this scoop front mudguard really does, in my mind, capture the essence of the original Bobber build. And that's what this series is all about. Once again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. You know I really do appreciate it. I'd also appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I am, of course, going to be back on Friday, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.